The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Welcome to You're Gonna Love Me, the podcast where we open the eyes, the ears, and the hearts of anyone who has judged or been judged. Well, hopefully. I'm your host, Katie Maloney. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to an all new episode. It's me, it's Katie. But with me today, I have a very special guest, a first time guest on the podcast. And I'm so happy that she is here with me today. I have Miss Raquel Levis, 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 which how do we say this? You said it right the Levis. first time. I knew I should have trusted my instincts there. Raquel, thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we had a little bit of a scheduling snafu because of the rains. My part, <laughs> my fault. I know it, that doesn't make any sense. But. It doesn't make sense, but Katie's been going through a lot with her house and a leak that's been oh yes, ongoing. And Ooh. since it rained the other day, she's been dealing with... Yes. A bunch of stuff. The people know. I've talked about that a little bit, just like the, the issues that we've been having with the leak. And because it rained randomly the other day, super hard, it leaked again. So we've had people in there working on our place and I've had to be there because of such. But so we're, we're here. We're here. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. I'm really happy that this past season on Vanderpump Rules, I got to know you more because even though you've, you know, you're not new to the show, I feel like I hadn't gotten to spend a lot of time with you. I feel like as the years go on, I'm becoming more and more comfortable sharing parts of myself with other people. I think it's really hard for me to be vulnerable, especially expressing how I'm feeling to other people, but especially when there's cameras on me, I feel like it's it's definitely a challenge for me. But I feel like I'm really coming into my own and feeling comfortable in my own skin and I'm feeling more confident than I've ever felt before. I mean, yeah, I can see that as well. I mean, I think, I think everyone has noticed that for sure. And everyone's like, go Raquel. But I just feel like, I mean, I feel as far as, you know, you and I having any kind of friendship in the past, I mean, it wasn't, (laughs) it had a lot to do with James, obviously. (laughs) I mean, I didn't want to, I didn't want to hold that against you, but I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't, help it. I mean, James and I did not get along. We right. were like mortal enemies. So obviously that did kind of trickle down to, to you a little bit. It, it It's hard when you have, you know, beef with somebody and they, you know, have a significant other, you're not really going to, it's going to hard, hard to forge a friendship there. Definitely. I understand that. Especially like you want to keep yourself surrounded by the people that charge your battery. And if, that person that's draining your battery is with this other person, then obviously you're not going to spend time with that person either. Yeah. It makes sense. It, it didn't really open up the door for us, but I'm really happy. We had so much fun this past summer. Really a lot of fun. I love it when you get a little toasted. <laughs> it's so much fun. Toasty Raquel is fun. Toasty Raquel likes to let a little loose. She does. <laughs> she gets a little carried away sometimes. You get, you get some absence shots in her. You never oh know what's going to happen. I don't do shots anymore. No. Because of that night. I had to go easy on the shots too because of Tequila Katie. <laughs> yeah. The infamous Tequila Katie. Right. Uh, listen, I still will partake in some shots, but I just, you know, give me a cocktail. I'll, I'll leisurely drink. Eventually I, I might get there, but <laughs> give me a lemon drop martini. Is that like your drink? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Lemon drop. I could see that. You feel like, I feel like you give like lemon drop vibes. I like a dirty martini. I love a dirty martini too. Recently. That's been like a very recent post breakup drink. Yeah. I like a filthy Mm, filthy martini. Filthy, make it extra dirty. I think it was Elizabeth Taylor that said, I'll have, what did she say? I don't know, something and then a dirtier man for dessert. Whatever. Ooh, a dirty like martini that. for dinner and a dirtier man for dessert. I could be making this up, but something along those lines. I love that. And every time I have a dirty martini, I just think of her. Got to challenge a little bit of Elizabeth Taylor. But I feel like the emancipation of Raquel looks really good on you. 
What are you most excited about in the future? I'm actually, this is news to you. This is news to everybody. I have a very fun, special announcement to make. Oh my God. I'm competing for Miss California USA. (gasps) Stop. June 3rd weekend. Yeah, I've been training and preparing for this competition and kind of focusing all of my energy into preparation for this. Oh my God, that is so exciting. Yeah, so... So what do you have to do? I don't really like know pageant life. I wanted to also ask you about this because I've seen... I mean, drop dead gorgeous and miscongeniality, which I don't think is probably the most accurate depiction of what goes into, you know, pageant, pageantry, if if that's what you call it. But I want to ask you kind of what you do to. Okay. So the competition starts with a panel of judges interview. So you go in a room in front of like eight judges and they ask you questions about your bio sheet, just wanting to get to know you, why you're competing and what makes you, you. And then we compete on stage in swimsuit where we're judged on physical fitness and then evening gown where we're judged on like grace, elegance, beauty, whatnot. They narrow it down to top 20 who then competes for the final competition the following day in swimsuit and evening gown. And then they narrow it down to top five and top five answers to onstage questions and then they will announce the order of oh my god the winners are you nervous I always get nervous especially on stage yeah I I mean that would I I couldn't I don't know that I could just like walk around a stage with in a bikini you know and like this is that is like the ultimate like judgment right there people are like critiquing like your body it is but I feel like it's given me motivation to stay physically fit and to work on myself and to try to be the healthiest version of myself I was doing a 75 hard challenge yeah oh my god um, (laughs) which I was like so motivated to do but I got burnt out because I was pushing myself so hard and then I just got over it. So I kind of fell off track a little bit, but I'm getting back into it. I'm drinking, trying to drink a gallon of water a day and oh. going to the gym at least once a day. I'm doing Toastmasters every Monday night, which is a club where we meet to work on public speaking and they give you critiques on speeches that you prepare and then you evaluate other speeches. And we also do table topics where somebody comes up with questions to ask and then we have to come up with an answer on the spot within a certain time frame. So it's really great practice for the competition and just like developing my public speaking skills. I feel like I could benefit from that. I feel like everyone could. I thought when you said Toastmasters, I'm like, do you just go around and make toast? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, oh my God. Oh my gosh. Well, that is super exciting. Yeah, the 75 hard Anyone that does that, I really admire them because that takes extreme discipline. I just also, I have to be realistic about my own life and lifestyle and just things that, you know, I want to do. And it just, that does not agree with me. I, it does <laughs> not agree with me either. Oh. I, I'm doing the 75 medium. So it's like tailored to intermediate. my needs. Yeah, it's the intermediate <laughs> version. So yeah. I'm not burning out on it. Yeah. Like just working out every day, but it wasn't it like you have to work out twice a day. One of them has to be outside. You have yes. to like read every day. I mean, read 10 I, pages. Yeah. What else? Um, it's like the no alcohol. Yeah. No me. alcohol. You have to stick to ja- a diet. Mm. It's too much all at once. I lasted nine days. (laughs) It is too much all at once. It really is. Yeah, no. Like, I'm going to limit myself to two drinks if I go out, you know, instead of getting tipsy. You know, I think that's that's doable. Just, (laughs) just like, moderation. Moderation Moderation is key. Exactly. I can do anything in moderation. Yeah. I've mastered moderation. That's great. (laughs) I love that for you. (laughs) Yeah, but this is the last year I qualify for Miss California USA. Is there like an age cap? Mm-hmm. What is the age cap? So How old are you? I'm 27. Wow. So mm-hmm. dang, Miss California, that is 
rude. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They're like, we only oh. want the young pretty ones. <laughs> do, do they have like a senior division They're not for, for the 35 and older because i can do not that. for this <laughs> division it's the miss universe oh okay. branch so miss california goes to miss usa and then miss usa goes to miss universe okay. but they do have like mrs pageants like miss like mrs world and stuff i'm just joking i would they would not like me there i don't think <laughs> i think they would love you i think you should compete <laughs> No, 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 that's not, it's not for me, but I like, I'm like into it. I like, I, I watch, I always watch like the Miss America pageant. I always thought it was just like, so fun to just, I don't know. I know some people don't agree with it. They think it's an antiquated entire thing, you know, but for some people that's just that they grew up doing pageants and like that was kind of like their whole world so yeah I didn't grow up doing pageants necessarily but when I was a teenager in high school I was scouted at the mall and it seemed like something fun to do like dressing up I love dressing up I'm such a girly girl and I wanted to be a princess when I grew up so you know, pageant was like totally up my alley, but I also had such a fear of public speaking and I knew that this would be a good way for me to step out of my comfort zone and help me grow. So if I win that 17 year old Raquel will just be like, so happy. Yeah. Bucket, bucket list. Yeah. I think you could do it. I think you could go all the way. Do you know anyone else competing? I do. I, <gasps> some of the other girls that I've competed with in the past are competing too. So it's, it's nice. It's like a, a sisterhood. Really? Mm -hmm. But no one gets competitive. I mean, we all get competitive, but it's not like, like claws out and breaking your heel, any catty stuff like that. It's, it's more sisterly. Like we're all encouraging each other to do well. And it's more of a mental challenge to just focus on yourself and not put your energy into other people, even though you're being literally compared to the woman next to you. Yeah. You, it's more of a, a mental state that you have to be in to compare yourself to the person that you were the last time you competed. Okay. That's mm -hmm. like a good sort of way to go into it. So you're not you, so you can keep your eye on your own page, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. I think so often as women, we are constantly comparing ourselves to other women mm -hmm. and society compares us to other women. There's standards, there's, you know, beauty standards, there's body standards, there's all that. So it's always incredibly difficult mm -hmm. to not have that in your mind. So going to a pageant where the, strictly judging, I would be... Oh, <laughs> yikes. Yeah, it's a lot. It's time for just a little break. So y'all know I love to play games on my phone. It's my way to unwind, relax. Don't judge me. You all do it. I know you do. But um, I especially love match three games, but I always feel like there's just something, you know, missing from them. There's just an element. I want a little bit more. I want story. I want romance. I want drama. I want mystery with my match three. You get what I'm saying? Well, Switchcraft is a mobile game with a unique blend of TV worthy writing, choose your own adventure style narrative and thousands of magical match three levels. I've become obsessed with this game. I love how many different characters they are. They're so diverse from different backgrounds. The storyline is super compelling. I always want to see what's going to happen next. So I have a hard time putting it down, honestly. I could play for hours and hours and hours. And you know, I love all things witchy. So in Switchcraft, you take on the role of a witch at Pendle Hill, which is the world's top academy of witchcraft. You play your way through hundreds of enchanting match three levels, revealing a dark and winding mystery story. And it all starts with the disappearance of your best friend. And now it's up to you to unravel the mystery of her disappearance using your magical match three skills. And along the way, you're going to find unique characters, a gripping story, even a little romance. And the best part is, is that your choices in the game determine the outcome of the story. So you are in the driver's seat. So much fun. You'll love this game. So you can download Switchcraft for free and unlock the magical mystery. 
Okay, let's get back to the show. Hey, beautiful people. My name is Elisa Reynolds, and I'm the executive chef and founder of My Two Cents LA and host of My Last Meal, a new podcast that asks people from all walks of life, whether it's musicians, celebrities, artists, chefs, scientists, Renaissance men and women, what their last meal on earth would be and why. So don't forget to tune in on Fridays. You can find us anywhere you can listen to podcasts, so why not? Let me tell you about the last meal. I want to be a little judgy with you, but it can be fun too. Okay. <laughs> is there anything besides, you know, going into being judged in a pageant, but is there anything currently right now that you're doing or into that you're judging yourself for or that you think people would judge you for? I'm not sure whether or not to tell everybody <laughs> about this. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> Because everyone <laughs> will judge me for this. I'm judging myself for this. What is this? Last night, <gasps> I went out for drinks with Peter. Oh, my God. And it was just a fun little time. And I figured this would be like a, a good opportunity for me just to like get back out in the dating world because I haven't had an official date since the breakup. <laughs> And so when he asked me to like go grab drinks with him, I was like, mm, okay, sure. Oh. Yeah. But I, yeah. Well, listen, I can't judge because I've gone for drinks with Peter and I've made out with Peter. So like, I'm, listen, I'm sitting here in judgment free zone over here. <laughs> and I don't, I don't listen. I don't think anyone will judge. Well, I don't want to say anyone. I think Plenty of women would love to go have drinks with Peter. First of all, I, I agree. Um, I mean, that it's it's only a little surprising because I just I would have not seen that one coming. I didn't see that one coming either. <laughs> wow, secret crush, Peter. You go. Oh my god, that's funny. I mean, you know what? You got to You. It's a good time. I feel like after a breakup to not say no. It's a, it's a great time just to start saying yes to things. I mean, I'm yes. trying to say yes to things. I haven't gone on any dates, but I'm saying yes to going out like with friends and to dinner yeah. and to just like meet up with people. And like, I'm in the pursuit of happiness. So totally. if, unless it's going to, you know, be bad for me, I'm going to do it. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. yeah. If it's going to bring me joy. Exactly. And a good time. Exactly. Then I'm saying Yes, I know. I've been like surrounding myself with so many friends during this time and it feels so nice to be supported by people and have like such positive energy around you. Not that it wasn't positive before, but it's just a different dynamic, different kind of relationships that are forming and developing and I'm enjoying it. Well, as you should. Well, speaking of other people, finish this. Okay. I'm judging you if like what's something you judge people for this one could be really bad actually <laughs> I'm judging you if you have a girlfriend after your engagement has been broken off <gasps> like literally what how many months <laughs> oh we're gonna one personal month, no like four weeks oh after the engagement it was, was broken weeks. off yeah James has a new girlfriend I mean, that's not news to anybody, but well, okay. I'm I'm judging you if you have a girlfriend after your engagement has ended oh. in a, in a one month period. Uh, that's it's quick. It's quick. It is quick. It's fine though. I mean, listen, it's everyone moves at their own time, but you know, I think, I think there's, there's a healing process that should be happening, you know, especially when you were with someone and planning to get married. And then when it, you know, when you're not the person that even ends it, you know? Yeah. I and that's where I'm giving, you know, I'm not judging too hard because, you know, I was the one that ended things and we all cope with breakups differently. Yeah. But so. I do feel like being single isn't a bad thing. No, like it, I think it's a great time to relearn who you are and heal from your past traumas and yes. like to figure out what you really, really like and to date and to 
date people and see, oh, do I like this person or do I not? Like, not really. Okay, next. And do I like how I, next person. do I like who I am with this person? Do I like how I feel with this yes. person? Reclaiming your identity. Yes, that part. <laughs> that part indeed. I mean, I think, yeah, being being alone is is important. I love being alone. Doesn't mean you can't <laughs> be alone and still enjoy the company of someone else. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are you enjoying company with other people besides Peter? Are you dating? Well, You're dating. Well, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, like, let's not get carried away here. It was one friendly date. Okay. And, but no, nobody else has asked me out on a date. So this is literally like the first person that asked me on a date. And I said, yes, because... Why the hell not? Uh, yeah, it's good practice. It's good practice after five years. <laughs> after oh my god, five with... years. I mean, listen, I have not been single in over twelve years, so I'm a little scared. Yeah, in a good way. I don't even know if you can be scared in a good way, but you know, it's it's a little like nerve wracking. It is scary, but it's also like invigorating and yeah. like exciting yeah I guess <laughs> but you guys are still living together right? yeah so I mean obviously you know our situation is that we you know own a home together yeah. and you know this living situ- like s- situation is not going to be f- forever you know we're trying to finish the repairs on our home and then we plan on listing our home selling it and then finding our own places to live but you know mm-hmm. it's been it's been really like nice it's like obviously we don't sleep in the same room you know mm-hmm. it's we're kind of like roommate <laughs> situation uh-huh. but no it's it's fine like we like well so like we went and got like drinks last weekend we you know we 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 are hanging out and our friendship is intact and we have great friendship. And so just through this transition, we can still be, you know, loving and peaceful with one another. And that's been really, really nice. Cause I know, I know so many times, you know, when people go through divorces or go through breakups, it's really ugly. Mm-hmm. And I feel really fortunate that it's not. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. And I do believe that it'll stay this way. Yeah, you know, but uh, heavy, heavy, heavy <laughs> stuff here. Heavy, heavy. Um, I don't know about you, but I've had so many people reach out to me, basically tell me that they're you know in a position where they have been in a relationship for five, six, seven, eight, many, many years, and they you know aren't happy and they want to you know leave, but they're not really sure like what to do. And I know you know when even when you told me that or told everyone at the reunion that Mm -hmm. you ended your engagement it was like it was it was like shocking and surprising but Mm -hmm. it was sort of like an empowering thing because you know I obviously hadn't talked about what I was feeling Mm -hmm. at that moment in that time I was still sitting with those feelings confused by them Mm -hmm. but when you see someone you know seemingly in a position where they're planning a future and with someone for a long time make that kind of tough choice you're just like wow like I feel like I could potentially do this yes. you know so yes. I, I don't know if people have reached out to you but they reach yes. out to me asking like what do you have advice for people that are okay. feeling like they this want is to leave the crazy thing because I'm realizing now how much of an impact people have on each other's lives mm-hmm. My best friend, Becca, broke off her marriage of 15 years this past, like within like six months or so. And that to me was like, wow, she, she can do it. I could do it, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was also like a processing thing, like realizing, is this really the relationship for me? coming to terms with it and like taking the steps mentally to prepare to leave a relationship that's no longer serving you in the ways that you need a relationship Mm -hmm. to be. I think when you see other people leave relationships that aren't for them anymore, it's inspiring. And I think deep down inside, if you get that feeling like, damn, if you have that little ounce like maybe I should leave my relationship then you should trust your gut and go with it 
Yeah. And do what you need to do mentally to prepare, but also don't like string that person along if that's not the person for you. Yeah, I agree. I think obviously it can be a really confusing mind fuck when mm-hmm. you when you have these kind of thoughts start to enter your brain because mm-hmm. it feels intrusive. It feels like you don't want it. You want to deny this. You want to feel like it's not real. Also, I think like taking a break is also good too because after James and I broke up and I didn't see him for a while and I picked up a box of things from his new apartment and I saw him differently. I saw him in a new light and like strangely was attracted to him, but (laughs) you know, obviously wasn't giving him any compliments or anything, but I feel like if you take a break from somebody that you are spending every single day with and have spent this entire pandemic through, it could be a little reset for you guys. Yeah. I think, I think it's just weighing sort of like those kind of options as well. Like, could you benefit from a break or do you feel that that would just be a stopping point to the real thing? You know, I, I understand that sometimes it could be like hard and tough to do the full, like ending it. It can feel very final, but I think like you said, trusting your gut and and implicitly trusting yourself and knowing Mm -hmm. that like you've thought through everything and you've weighed pros and cons and you know that like your needs aren't being met and maybe you're not being fulfilled or or just simply that you have just become different people Mm -hmm. like those things are okay you know you don't need to talk yourself out of anything you don't need to talk yourself into anything Mm -hmm. just trusting yourself and looking, you know, into the future and saying like in five years, you know, and, and you never know, you can't, I can't read the future. I think that like, it'll work out how it's supposed to work out. But I just think, you know, you know, you know, what's right for you. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's the hardest thing I've ever done because I'm always going to love Tom. I'm always going to have so much love for him. He's, you know, he's been my family and my best friend and we've shared everything and I wanted to be with him like forever. Mm -hmm. But you know, I was, I, I felt like I was the only one in it, you know? So yeah, I think if you're in that position, write a list. Pros and cons yeah. list. Is that what you did? Yeah, of course. You know, mm-hmm. and just trust your gut, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then see how, see how you feel after. Cause that kind of is the most telling. I mean, it was, right. it's, it's, it's as, as sad and emotional it was, I did really feel the sense of relief, you know, mm-hmm. because I was, you know, was feeling kind of bogged down and felt like, you know, I was just going through motions. Yeah. To feel that I was finally said with the things that were on my mind and in my heart, to get them out there and to feel like, okay, well now I can move on and heal from these things was freeing to me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I love that. (laughs) Aw. You know? And now... And now we're both single. And now I'm a spinster. Just kidding. And living <laughs> life. And it's great. <laughs> it's, yeah. I feel, I'm I'm very optimistic. I feel very hopeful. We'll see what the future holds for, for Katie. Yeah. You never know. Anyway, we're going to end this with the rage text of the day. Oh. So what what's your rage text, Raquel? My rage text goes to all those damn sirens that want to drive by my apartment while I'm trying to meditate and connect to my younger self and heal from my childhood traumas and these damn sirens that go off and break my meditation. My rage text goes to you. Fuck you, sirens. I like that. Yeah, I know. This is being off of a boulevard in Hollywood is just... It's very noisy. That's why I like the valley. It's a little more... It is zen in the valley. We get airplanes, but, you know... Mm. <laughs> that could be annoying. <laughs> it's, you know, I take that over, like, honking and sirens and every, like, that, yeah. Anyways, but thank you so much for coming on my podcast. Thanks for having me, Katie. You are welcome back anytime. Thanks. And then to everyone else, I love you. Until next time, be kind to yourselves. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself like you love your best friend. Amen. Amen. All right. Bye. Bye.
Thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to subscribe, leave a rating and review. Follow along on social at Music Kills Kate and tune in next week for an all new episode. 